the first thing you want to do when you see a graph on an AP calculus question is figure out what that is the graph of. And so the first thing we'll do here is find out that this is the graph of the function h. So what we have up top here is the graph of h of x. And what they want us to do is uh, find out which of the following has the greatest value. So that's kind of their lovely way of giving us five little math problems inside one math problem. When you look down and you see that you don't have a graph that has sort of your standard geometry shapes that you're not going to be able to break it up into, you know, triangles and half circles and things that you could calculate out the areas of, and you don't have an equation to work with, and someone's talking about what's happening with the greatest value, odds are this is going to break down to just being able to tell if things are positive, if they're negative, or if they're equal to zero. And then usually one of those is going to stand out from the rest. So let's start walking through these a chunk at a time and see what we can find. So on option A, option A is asking us to find the average value of H over this given interval. So average value, that is an integral formula that we have to just have memorized. So the average value formula for an integral looks like 1 over B minus A times the integral from A to B of whatever your equation is. So for us, what we would get out here, this would be the integral from A to B. So A would be our lower bound of negative 2 and B would be our upper bound of 4. And then we're talking about this H equation. And then we're going to multiply that by 1 over B minus A. So 1 over 4 minus and minus 2. Well, we know the frontier is 1 sixth, and, but what can we tell about the actual integral? So looking at our graph right now, we're starting here at negative 2, and we're ending here at 4. And all we can really judge from this is reminding ourselves that area above the x-axis is considered positive area, and area below the x-axis is considered negative area. So if I look from negative 2 to 4, I can see that I've got a bunch of positive area there, but I've got a whole bunch more negative area going on here. And so if I add all of those things up, what I know is that I'm going to end up with more negative area than I am positive. So I don't know what the actual value of that integral is, but I know that the answer to it is going to be a negative number. And a negative number times 1 sixth is going to end up giving us a negative number out. So out of here, we know that option A right now is negative. Then we go and look at option B. Option B wants us to find the integral between negative 2 and 4 of h of x. Well, we kind of just talked about that piece. That piece we know right there, we did that, that we know, again, not much more, but we know that it's negative. And if we had to compare these two, you know, the one-sixth of a negative is going to be larger because it'll be a smaller negative. But really, these both are both negative, so odds are these aren't going to be what we're looking at. Then we look at C right now, and C wants us to find not the average value, but the average rate of change. Remember that average rate of change is just fancy math talk for slope as we've always known it. So what they're wanting us to do is they want us to find the slope between 2 and 4. So 2 is right here, so that would be a point somewhere around there, and 4 is this point right here. And so if we draw a line between the two of those things, the average rate of change on that is the slope of that line. And again, we can't figure it out directly. We might be able to get an estimate, but for right now, let's just kind of go with the idea of whether that's positive or negative. Well, this is an increasing slope. The slope is headed up, and so we know that what we're looking at right now is a positive number. And so at this point, option C has jumped to the front. We know that a positive is always going to be larger than negatives. So we can really just throw away A and B at this point. Looking at option D, this wants the integral from 1 to 4. Well, that's the area between the curve and the x-axis from 1 here until 4 right here. Well, that is that full negative space. And so that, again, is going to have a negative value. Don't know what the value is, but I know it's negative. And again, a negative is not going to be bigger than a positive, so we throw that out. Then the last piece here wants us to find out what is the derivative 
h prime at 1. So this would be the slope at x equals 1. So if I come over here and I look at my graph and I say, okay, at x equals 1, that would be right there. What is the slope of that? Well, the slope of that tangent line would be headed down. That would be a negative amount. It would be decreasing. And so again, we know that the slope here would be negative. And so the answer to this, we don't need to know the number. We just need to know that that would be negative. And again, a negative is not going to be larger than a positive. So in the end, the only positive number was option C. And so we didn't need to know the actual numbers in this. We just needed to know positives and negatives. And the positive is going to be bigger than any negative. So the answer is option C. Thanks for watching my video. If you liked it, please click that like button and subscribe. And also share it with your friends and anyone else you know who might be crying about an upcoming AP Calc test. You can find more videos from me, more sample AP Calc questions, and my complete AP Calc study guide over at my website, apcalcprep.com. Have a great one.